It's every fisherman's dream. A creek full of barramundi in Weeper, far north Queensland, within shouting distance of the pub. Just one hitch, a big one. And Todd Bairstow didn't see it coming. And I ended up facing him like this in the, on the mud, on the in the water with just his snout sticking out. Get on his, on his on, on both my legs, just growling up. <laughs> like that. He can just just growl at me. And I'm like, this is it, he's gonna pull me in. Few men have looked into the eyes of an attacking saltwater croc and lived to tell the tale. But three weeks ago, this 29-year-old mine worker was face to face with one of these monsters for almost 30 minutes. Locked in its jaws and a life or death battle of wills. Looks like you had a fight with a chainsaw there, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does, mate. Yeah. The croc shattered both his legs, ripped off a finger, tore dozens of deep gashes and left him with nightmares that won't go away. So your legs have gone out from under you and you're half in the water? Half in the water. And I went, tried to um, put my hand down and try to get him off and he took another bite and that's when he must have pinned my hand, pinned my hand to the leg. With one hand trapped in the croc's jaws, Todd knew he had to fight or die. So grabbed a mangrove root with his free hand. I realised I had to get that bloody hand out. Or I'm all in that croc shit. So I started just yanking this one as hard as I could. I managed to pull it off. Pull it free. Pull it free, but at the same time I pulled my finger off. But what's the finger? <laughs> you lost a finger, but you had your hand out. Had me hand out, mate, yeah. yeah. He now had a better grip on the bank, and so began a deadly tug of war. Alone in the mangroves, with the croc and dig, his faithful but clueless dog. The dog come up and he was sniffing around, carrying on my bloody... So I grabbed him and I threw him over my back, hoping that he'd take him, you know, because I've heard a lot of stories, dogs, crocs like dogs, you know. So you threw your dog in the water? Threw a dog in the water, hoping he'd let go. As a sacrifice? Sacrifice, so I can go. Get out. I mean, you love your dog. I don't love him that much. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But the croc wasn't interested? Not at all. Not at all. And that's, and that's the moment we had both my legs from this hole in there. You know, like, croc, croc, somebody help, croc, he's got me, I'm gonna die. Did you believe that? Yeah. yeah at that stage, yes, I did. If no, one, if no one was there to help pull me out, I'm dead. Todd was literally being eaten alive. And incredibly, it's a fate that's becoming more frequent as Australia's population pushes further into croc territory. Up here, modern man is no match for these prehistoric predators. There can't be too many other cities in the world that employ full-time croc catchers. So that's coming in here? It sure is, yep. Great. Give you something to play with on the way back. It's all right. <laughs> it's one of the symbols of the Australian outback. The problem is we're not exactly in the bush. We're on the doorstep of the capital city where more than 120,000 people work and live. Rangers like Tommy and Joey here in the Darwin waterways are pulling out more than four of these things from their traps every single week. It's little wonder that the number of attacks are on the rise. And even the most experienced hands can make mistakes. He originally bit my whole hand and fortunately he let go and just grabbed the end of it and ripped those two fingers off and part of my hand. That was in one bite? Yeah, unfortunately. In the spinning process he's ripped everything off. So. Since hunting crocodiles was outlawed in the early 1970s for fear they would be wiped out, their numbers have spiralled and so have attacks. 26 people are known to have been killed. Many others, never confirmed as croc victims, have simply disappeared without trace. These crocodiles are real 
killers. If you dived off the Adelaide River Bridge and started swimming, there is a 100% chance you'll get taken. 100%. You're just not going to make it. Professor Graham Webb okay. is yeah, Australia's right, right. foremost expert on crocodiles. He also owns a crocodile farm, and even he believes the numbers are out of control. So the croc that attacks someone, you've got to take him out of the game completely. Just take him. Take him in. There's no big deal. You know, Australia's full of crocodiles now. It's all, you know, everyone makes this... <gasps> got to take a crocodile out. Well, just take it out. It, it's that quick. From the air, Graham showed me how easy croc spotting has become all over northern Australia. One every 50 metres. Yeah. It's hardly an endangered species. Well, it's not an endangered species. And not too far away, we saw why more crocs mean more fatalities. In October, I counted 100 crocodiles over three metres long in 200 metres, right at that barrage. Fishermen blithely casting a line in that very same spot. What are you doing? You reckon it's safe here, do you? It's not 100% safe, that's why I certainly keep a, um, a good eye out. You reckon you'll see it coming? Well, maybe not. <laughs> you don't see the one that gets you, that's what they say. <laughs> If you did see it coming, this is what it would look like. He may now be safely in captivity in Darwin's Crocodilus Park and known as Eric, but these are the jaws of a man-eater. He got a guy that was coming back, a fisherman, that had fallen off a crossing that was in flood. Just grabbed him as he fell. Got him, ran here, ran here I think, ran here actually. You wouldn't stand a chance, croc that mm. size. They're an ancient species and have remained virtually unchanged for hundreds of millions of years. Go, 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 out, out, out. Everyone in. <laughs> so too has their killing style. A silent approach, surprise attack, and a sudden death roll to end the struggle. It's quite efficient because they lock the teeth on, the teeth like a big stapler, and they throw the body around. You see, this guy is probably 500 kilos, and it all comes to bear here, and it just tears and rips. It beggars belief that Todd Bairstow can now describe how a death roll feels from the inside. All you feel is a little, you go slack, and a little like that, next one, bang! So here we're going to do a roll straight away. As soon as I try to get him off. Pin, I try to put it on his head to kick him off. He didn't like that. And just, that's when he just spanned and broke my first leg. And he just rolled and he just popped my other leg. Oh! These little fellas here are all teeth marks. And this is what a death roll does to the human body. He has uh, two compound dislocated knees, two very serious injuries. Todd has months of painful reconstructive surgery and rehabilitation ahead. I don't like his chances of competing in the next uh, Boston Marathon. But Todd's already endured his marathon, fighting for his life on the banks of Trunding Creek. For nearly 30 minutes, he battled to the point of exhaustion against 300 kilos of muscle and teeth. Gee, that must have been a long time. Oh, mate, I've done with some of bloody life, sir. And, um, I just, I could keep yelling out, and this I this lady, she goes, I'll get help, I'll get help. And I just thought, straight away, I was like, oh, you beauty. Somebody's on, somebody just helps on its way. Enter Todd's Night on a Shining Harley, fellow mine worker, Kev Bevan. When Kev heard someone had been grabbed by a croc, he headed straight for the creek, 
and plunged into the mangroves. You could hear him screaming, could you? Yeah, mate, he was bellowing for his life, bloody screaming. Uh, I went, ran out there and latched onto him and he was just saying, don't let go of me, don't let go of me, it's, it's got me. Kev's like, Toddy, Kev, get me. he's still on me, he's still on me. And Kev ran down there and he grabbed one of my hand, he pulled me up, pulled me up and he got me a bit up and the croc's still having my leg. I was actually a bit scared on how hard you actually pull a person when there's a crocodile hanging on him. Yeah, well. So I just kept a weight against him and he was lashed around my leg and then he came free and I sort of stepped back and dragged him like that and I saw a big swell behind him and that's what I thought, let's get him out of here quick, and me. Oh, the happy mate, I was a happy man, I'll give you the hot tip. <laughs> just being on the bank. Just being on the bloody bank, mate. <laughs> Oh, my hell, I started crying straight up, mate. Oh, I couldn't believe it. It'll be a while before Todd ventures back into crop territory. But today, Graham Webb has convinced me to do just that. You see the nest down here? See the muddy water? Now, she's probably in there, right? There she goes, there's the side here. Yeah, there she goes, there she goes, there she goes, there she goes. Look, 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 the big crop. Three metres. We're wading into the very heart of their breeding grounds, raiding the nests of mother crocodiles for their eggs. And it's not for the faint-hearted. There's 60 nests in here, so there's probably 500 crooks. In here? In here. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and you give me an oar. I'm relying on you with the oar. It was hoped harvesting like this would create a viable crocodile industry in the north and keep numbers down. Look. There's the eggs there. Oh yeah, nicely popped away. Oh, coming out. Well, coming out all over the place. Yeah. Back at Graham's crocodile farm, the eggs are incubated until they hatch. <laughs> and eventually end up as expensive handbags or on someone's plate. It takes three or four years and then the animals, uh, you know, worth probably a thousand dollars. But commercial farming has had next to no impact on numbers in the wild. And the fear is that attacks on humans will only increase. But strangely enough, Todd Bairstow, who so nearly became the latest victim, isn't out for revenge. What do you want to see happen to the croc that got you? Um, punch one of his t teeth out from his bloody necklace. <laughs> so you don't want a new pair of crocodile boots? I just relocated to a croc farm, I'd say. You're happy for that croc to stay alive? Yeah, yeah. He it, it, it kept me alive. He let me live. <laughs> yes. As it turned out, he was a she. This is the croc that tried to make Todd her lunch. It's um, a fair piece of croc, really. For the first time, Kev Bevan, who came to Todd's rescue, can get a good look at what he and his mate were up against. And uh, there was nothing between you and it, apart from t Todd. <coughs> I might have run away if I had saw that, mate. <laughs> it's um. Pretty scary sort of a croc. Just as Todd hoped, the croc's life will be spared. She's headed for a cosy retirement at a tourist park. As for Todd, all he wants to do now is get back to Weeper, buy Kev a beer, and apologise to his dog. I'm going to see our boy again. It comes out of the wash, mate. And here I am, it's all good. Make me a better man, I think. Jeez. Oh, that's a big call. Mm. That's a big call. Appreciate things more. You think so? Bloody oath. Bloody oath. Yep. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.